It's Andrew here with Burnett's Custom Woodworks. Have you ever tried centering a faceplate on a piece of work, screwing it down only to get it on the lathe and realize that it's not perfectly centered? Well, I struggled with this, and with my lathe only going down to 600 RPMs, not having it perfectly centered is a problem. I made a faceplate on my old Nova Comet that I had, and it was self-centering. It worked really great. I loved it. Um, but when I sold my lathe, I sold it with it, thinking that when I got a new lathe, I would end up with a, a bigger uh, spindle thread. Ended up, I ended up getting the same one. So, <laughs> ended up having to buy me another one and make another one. So, I figured I'd bring y'all along on how I made it, and hopefully it'll help some of y'all out on your faceplate work. So, if you want to see how I make it, stick around. Alright, so here's the faceplate we're going to start with. This is a 4 inch faceplate by Hurricane. And my last one I used was a PSI. The PSI and the Hurricane seem identical. Um, the reason I went with the Hurricane this time was because I could Amazon Prime it here. So These chucks are designed to have a worm screw in the middle. That way you can easily center your, your workpiece on here before you screw it down. It's a lot easier than just eyeballing it. And with my lathe only going down to 600 RPMs, I really want to be able to get my, my blank centered perfectly on here. So originally I went with this and the screws that came with it, I'd read some reviews. Some people had said they were bad and I'm like, well, it was probably just them. So I chucked a piece of maple on here. You had it nice and centered with the the worm screw. Pre-drilled some holes, started putting these in, and broke off all four screws. Well, I was upset, and I was like, well, I'll deal with them later. So I turned this just a little bit more to make me some new holes, and I only had three inch, so I only had four holes to start with. Turned it just a little bit more, ended up breaking this off. So, I had to come up with a way to make this easier without using the worm screws. Because I was down to the little tiny one, and I didn't want to end up breaking another one of them off into one of my pieces of wood. So, my recommendation, and this is the second chuck I've owned like this. I sold my first one with my first lathe when I got rid of it. Everything that comes with it, garbage just how it is except the allen wrench the face plate and the set screw now before we start all this you're going to want to remove the set screw all the way out take the set screw lay it to the side and now we're ready to machine the hole for the the pin Alright, so as far as tools we're going to need for this, we're going to need a faceplate that's for your lathe that's either got a small hole in it for a worm screw or a solid faceplate. I have seen a couple ones that were solid. You're going to need a drill chuck to go in your tailstock, a 3 8 metal bit made for drilling metal. Piece of 3 8 inch bar. Uh, this one happens to be steel. You could use aluminum if you had it. A file. And a hacksaw for trimming the metal bar to length. And of course you'll need a wood lathe. Alright, so this part's pretty self-explanatory. You got the faceplate on the lathe. You got the lathe set to the lowest speed. We got us a chuck in here, drill chuck, and then we have a metal drilling bit, 3 8 diameter. And we're going to drill this hole out to 3 8. Um, something I didn't mention is some oil to lubricate this. So I'm going to drill this out. Alright, now that we've got our 
3 8 inch hole right here we want to take our set screw and reinsert it into our hole now what we want to do is thread it all the way in to make sure that when we drilled through we didn't make any burrs and it'll get clean any of them out that might be in the threads itself and if you watch the inside you can see the set screw that all the way through now so I'll go ahead and back that back out and there's a couple little piece of metal in there I'll just blow right out so now what we want to do is get our metal bar and I've already filed like a little bevel on this end so it should slide in good I'm gonna slide this in and I just bring mine to the back of the just bring it up flush right here in the back just enough just enough to give it a hold and then we're going to tighten this set screw down now as far as how long you want this I found about a half an inch maybe five eighths or three quarter inches is about right so we're just gonna make it a little mark on there just give us a little a little reference line it don't have to be precise and you'll see why here in a bit so now let's take this back over the lathe and cut this off all right so this is where the hacksaw comes into play I'm literally just going to use the lathe to hold it while we cut it off on our mark. Alright, now that we have it cut off while it's chucked up in here, we're going to take our file and smooth the edges up just very carefully. I'm actually going to turn the lathe on while I'm doing this and use the lathe as the power and just hold the chuck or the the file to it. And just like that, the ends smoothed up and we put a little bevel on the edges of it so it don't have any sharp edges. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how I use this. I have this maple bowl blank that I, I cut it on my bandsaw. And the jig I use, I use an eighth inch hole in the center that I use to use as a pivot point. So that hole is center of this circle that was cut on the bandsaw so now i take that eighth inch hole with a three eighths inch drill bit and drill me a little small hole right there three quarter inch deep or so just enough to do it now i can take this face plate and take that pin and put it right down in that hole and there's no question that this face plate is not centered there's no eyeball work there's no guesswork it's literally you put it there it's it's there now it's as simple as that and then we attach some screws And we're there. Quick, simple, easy, 99.999% unless you mess up drilling your 3 8 inch hole. If it wasn't measured exactly center, then you're not going to be center. But if you have a center reference that you've cut it on the bandsaw, drill your 3 8 hole, just drop this bad boy in there, screw it down, you're going to be centered. It's really helpful if you don't have a big lathe, if you have a smaller lathe or one that don't go real slow. Getting it true and center 
will make life a lot easier and also allow you to get a bigger bowl. You don't have to end up cutting as much off. So and now we're going to chuck this bad boy up on the lathe, which this one may not be exactly centered because this one has gone through my kiln and got dried. So it, it's kind of looking like it is a little bit warped, but that center hole is pretty close to where I should be started. All right, so we have it chucked up in the lathe. We got our tailstock brought up. And let's see, which this one, the log is a little bit more thicker over here than it is over here. So as far as trueness, it's probably not going to be exactly true, but this is going to be the, the closest you can get it. We're just screwing the faceplate on. I'm comfortable with that. Very, not not much at all. So there is a little bit of a, a lip right here, I guess, where the bandsaw messed up and didn't make it perfectly true, but it's nothing that I can't handle at my lowest speed on this lathe. All right, so that is how I make my self-centering faceplate. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. There will be a little quick educational video on how I do my faceplate work. And if you like this, please click the like button. And also subscribe and click the bell for future notifications on future videos. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.